in Chelsea, we are at Amsterdam Whitney Art Gallery. With us is one of the co-owners, Ruthie Tucker. Now, Ruthie, tell us uh, what we can expect today. Certainly, Crystal. First of all, thank you and welcome to Amsterdam Whitney Gallery's Midsummer Night's Dream Extravaganza. We are so grateful for the beautiful Crystal Heart to film our fabulous artists here in Chelsea. Our Midsummer Night's Dream Extravaganza uh, exhibits artists from all over the world, from the seven continents. We boast there are more stars than there are in the heavens. We feature abstract, figurative, landscape, still life, photography, and we are thrilled and thank you for shining the spotlight on our fabulous artists. Amsterdam Whitney Gallery is located in the heart of Chelsea and we are thrilled and would love everyone to come down and visit our wonderful artists. Thank you. With us is Judith Gale, and Judith is originally from? Baltimore, Maryland, but I live in New York City now. Oh, how are you enjoying New York? I love it. I love it. Family here. It's great. I'm Did you move here because of your art? I went to SVA, so that was one reason, yes. Absolutely. And, and tell me um, about the artwork that you have here. So these paintings are inspired by seashells. They're back row images of seashell patterns that I then play with the color and texture and make them happy and optimistic paintings. And, and how did you come up with the subjects, uh, seashells? Well, my father's an avid seashell collector, so I grew up with shells all around the world in my home, and it, being exposed to that, you see how beautiful these patterns th from underwater are, and I just love them so much that I wanted to spotlight that beauty. And do you have five paintings, did you say? Five yet? paintings here. Um, three are of Kona's shells, and one's of a volute, and an Argus shell, cowrie shell, which has little circles. And it's very interesting because they're, they're like paintings. Like, they really have that movement of, of a painting. And, and now, um, this first one we have over to our uh, right over here. Uh, t tell us about that painting. So that's, that's Argus. It's called Argus Three. It's a cowrie painting, and it looks like little circles. So, And I made the colors very happy and bright and put my own twist to it with lots of texture using sand and... And now behind us we have... Uh, the, That's the... Voluta Moria, it's a volute shell. Um, those are one of my favorites. They have beautiful energy flowing patterns and it also reminds me of just brush strokes and gestural movements. That's a, that's a cone shell as well, another species of cone. Um, kind of, I like it, it looks like an aerial view of, well, it has many interpretations, but I just, I like the two An, an aerial view of what? Like it looks like the ocean and the beach, but that's what's so great about these patterns. There's so many ways you can interpret what they look like, just like in an abstract painting. And it's like a coral. Right, exactly, a coral. coral. And then the next one has a, 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 the pink and corals and yellow. And right. Uh, uh, That's another Argus painting by the cowrie species. And that I played with, I used graphite and so many different types of um, textures to really make it come alive and look organic. That last one is, is high intensity with the yellows. Yes, that's very, like, very high energy, happy painting. It looks, it's a conus shell as well, textile conus. And it's, has, it looks like mountains to me, but I just, I just love that one. Those are one of my favorites. The patterns are just so intricate. And what's next? Keep doing these. I would love to scale bigger. Um, yeah, just keep keep on working. I love painting. I love nature and bring them together. And what size are they approximately? Some They're all like four by five feet approximately. And, yeah. and where do you see it? What type of room? Business? Um, uh, um, hotels, museums, since they have to do with shells. Um, probably, like hopefully something an optimistic way of looking at um, shells and showing that we have to preserve our environment and our coral reefs and our underwater, our other land. This is Judith Mont, and uh, she's recently uh, just finished her master's degree in painting and fine art. 
and has been studying and working and painting for a long time, mixed media and oil and acrylic on canvas. And uh, Judith uh, stumbled upon an idea, collaborating with uh, people, her father and some other artist friends, but developed an idea on her own to take beautiful, naturally God-created graphical surfaces of color and design from the seashells, transpose them with photographs by magnifying the images 10 to 20 times, then using that as the subject matter and content for incredible compositions on canvas in oil and acrylic, which is a whole new movement in the abstract expressionist world that the whole New York and the art world is about to find out about. I give you the one and the only, the new and exciting Judith Gale here at thank you. The, thank you. Amsterdam, Amsterdam, Amsterdam Whitney Gallery. If you take a look at here, this would be an olive shell that has beautiful, it's called a tent olive, has beautiful images that looks like Chinese hieroglyphics. And if you look at the painting down there, it has the same hieroglyphics. So Judy was able to take photographs, enhance the photographs, obviously uh, magnify them, variability, she can even take microscopic microscopic uh, pictures of uh, different sections and then she enhances them and then uses mixed media, paints over them and even uses the natural, the sand of a beach to put that three-dimensional surface on the final product. So they're incredible creations. I, I would agree that this is abstract expressionism. But now we're talking about the embellishment of, of uh, what are the products of living creatures that will not exist 10 or 15 years from now unless we do things to save the coral reefs. And that's part of this whole mission of, of uh, where she had started with me on a foundation for the preservation of coral reefs, fell in love with the seashells and just put that to her life work of painting. And that's uh, part of this whole product here. But it has a nice mission. She puts a lot of educational materials together to educate sixth graders. She has a whole educational program giving out shells and educational materials. So it's all part of the same theme of preservation of the planet Earth. We need to start with different uh, things like preserving the Great Barrier Reef, which is turning white right now, and pretty soon we won't have any of these shells. We won't have coral reefs 10 or 15 years from now unless we think about preservation. So I'd like to think that this, there is a bit of an inspiration of this whole show that Judy's putting together on that theme, which is sort of, which is a wonderful theme. And in addition, the paintings speak for themselves. They're gorgeous, they're beautiful. Uh, as Renoir would say, Pierre Renoir would say, a paint, painting should speak to you for its beauty and the pleasure it gives you. We don't want to, we have too many things in life that are sad and make us miserable. When we see paintings, they should make us feel good and the, the, the colors that you've seen in the, in the show, they're lively, they're spirited. Everybody looks at these paintings and they smile. And that to me is one of the biggest gifts of this show. Thank you. With us, Diane Holland, all the way from what, San Francisco? San Francisco. Well, welcome. Thank you. And, and, and Diane, you've been here before, and, and tell me a little bit, has anything changed over the last year, or, or anything new in your technique? Or? Actually, these are a little bit different, in that uh, I have actual abstract food items in them. The other ones were more just plain abstractions. So I'd like to describe some of them, if I could. To you. Okay, and, and you're talking food items, did food you Food items, yes, that's what they are. And, and how did you get that idea? Um, well, I was thinking about today's times and how people are so uh, feeling confused and having a feeling of instability and, and, that, and that food brings people together, it makes them uh, celebrate over different events, like we're here tonight, we're having cheese and wine or champagne. Um, we give toasts when we, you know, before we eat and we drink wine. And that particular painting is about cheese and wine. It's called Jarlsberg Party. 
and it's um, it, it's a it's a form of a celebration. And to me, um, the the more rigid lines that I have in these paintings are expressing the anxiety and the frustration that people feel today. So you think people are really frustrated and I and 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 eating. Yeah. Well, eating, eating, <laughs> e eating is a comfort zone. Yes. Yeah, so, and and just before we get to the paintings, how large are the paintings? They are thirty by forty. Thirty by forty. Yeah, forty inch uh, feet. Inch feet. <laughs> yes. And and they'd look good in well living rooms, also oh, in business. Yes. Also. yes. These are like the colors are earth tones, and I was very specific about that because I know that people really are into the earth quality right now. I love earth tones. Yeah, me too. So, so, so um, and, and the foods that I've uh, represented here are traditional and they're universal. They've, you know, they've been around for centuries. Uh, cheese and wine and melons and figs. So this. Uh, painting is entitled Jarlsberg Party. First of all, I love Jarlsberg cheese. So um, the cheese pieces uh, are over here, and then there are like you can use the platters or around. And this represents the wine right here, the wine bottle, and the upside down wine bottle. Um, it's a very uh, abstract. Uh, a representation of cheese and wine. But um, for me, it's a celebration. A celebration not only in good times, but also in times that are very uh, disturbing and in unstable. So, um, uh, people, this is a universal quality that people have to, to celebrate with food and to enjoy other people socially, uh, it, it actually brings people together. This painting is um, also a abstract representation of food. It is figs and melon, which have been used traditionally uh, over the centuries uh, in ancient times. Um, figs have been noted in the Bible for you know many, many, many years, and. Um, it, again, it's a, a companion to uh, uh, socializing, to bringing people together in celebration for uh, joy, peace, uh, events that may be happening in their lives. And it's universal. No matter what's going on, you still can enjoy food. So these were biblical foods and they're here in my paintings in an abstract way, but um, they're here. And the jagged angular forms around it kind of represent the, uh, the more aggressive, uh, disturbing, anxious feelings that we have today. And then the food comes out from that so that we're actually celebrating in times of that we're just that we feel anxious and we can still enjoy food. This painting is more of an indulgence. This one um, is an it's it's entitled Chocolate Sunday. So it is really the essence of you know if you really need an instant gratification, you're going to get it when you go out and get a, a chocolate sundae. And there's a, a lot of meaning to that because um, it, it can be a reward, very rewarding to uh, celebrate once in a while and go on a binge and have a chocolate sundae or just indulge in chocolate fudge. So um, I consider this painting uh, a time when um, you just feel like you, you can let go for a while for one night and uh, actually have such great gratification in uh, munching on that chocolate. With us is Anna Franklin and we are at the Amsterdam Whitney Art Gallery. It is in June, it is a warm day. She's coming all the way down from the East Hamptons where we could be by that beach today. Now Anna, tell me a little bit about the, the artwork you have here today. Okay, uh, this is part of a series that I call Liquid Gardens. 
you know, um, to me, you know, the beauty of nature is very important. You know, my art is not about shocking or provoking, you know, but it is about, you know, if there is a message, it's about making people aware how beautiful, you know, nature can be. You know, I'm also a landscaper, as be, besides being, you know, uh, you know, an abstract painter. It's, uh, I'm very eclectic because uh, I don't want to be uh, bogged down to do one thing over and over and over again. I'm restless by nature, so I want to try new things. I challenge myself, you know. And so far, I'm very proud to say that at least, you know, I, I've been able to succeed in both, you know, the representational and the non-representational art, you know. Uh, colors are important to me. Beauty. They are colorful. I see. Yes, and uh, you know, I know that the beauty is in the eyes of the beholder, and we all have different standards, you know, for beauty. This is my beauty, you know. This is uh, as I drive around East Hampton, as you know, beautiful. Uh, you know, we're not there for the rich and uh, <laughs> rich and famous. We're there because we love the uh, nature that surrounds it. You know, all those beautiful, as you said, the beaches. You know, many times as I drive around, I say, oh, that's a painting. <laughs> this is called Liquid Garden. And uh, I imagine, I said, what if all the colors of my garden fuse together into some sort of a, a liquid form, <laughs> you know, aspect. And, uh, and that's exactly what it is. I feel, it, it, I, I painted it late in the summer last year you know, almost fall, and uh, all the colors were so magnificent that I figured, that it, I felt like I was almost swimming in a sea of colors, and that's how my liquid garden came about. This is actually taken from a photograph a friend of mine sent me from British Columbia. It's Butchard Garden. And to me, again, it's another aspect, another representation of uh, uh, nature, although this is also man-made. But, you know, the, we didn't invent the trees. Somehow they came from nature itself. We just learned to harvest it, you know, cultivate it, and uh, put together in this gorgeous, you know, uh, say, canvas of colors. You know, there is no better canvas to me, as far as colors are concerned, as nature. You know. This one was also <laughs> painted on a very hot day, uh, and I called it Meltdown. So this is purely how I felt. This is really uh, something that, uh, at the moment, you know, uh, how, how I was feeling very loose, very... Uh, I don't know how, even how to explain it. I, I, some people say, were well, you upset? I don't know, not at all. I just felt actually very passionate about my surroundings, what I was seeing. And uh, that particular thing is uh, really a symbol uh, around, uh, which is my mother's doily. <laughs> she passed away long ago, unfortunately. But uh, I, I, uh, I wanted to put it in there because uh, anything beautiful that I learned in life is really from my mom. So I wanted to put it into this. This to me mostly represent my subconscious, my passion for art. Yeah. Inside the office there is what I call red butterfly. And it's just, uh, there was uh, a red butterfly that came to rest itself on one of my pots there. And I figured I would surround the butterfly with a world of colors. Colors are what I'm all about. You, I feel that, well, you know, anything, when you start with an empty canvas, it's a challenge, you know? And uh, I just have to go with it, with what feels right to me, you know? And again, you know, if you look at the colors, the green, the blue, the yellow, it's, uh, it's, it's really what you will find in nature, together with water. Because I was born by the water, because I'm really originally an Italian. I was born in Italy. <laughs> with us is Ann Gores. Ann came all the way from Seattle, Washington. Tell us today uh, what we can expect uh, to see. Well, today at the Amsterdam Whitney Gallery, I have four paintings. Uh, there's still lifes, florals, and there's some lemons in there, too. And tell me, has anything changed your technique uh, and anything different this year? Um, I don't know. I think I'm still following the same path, the Impressionist 
path, uh, color and light and wonderful compositions, outdoor paintings, indoor paintings, and I plan to continue doing it, uh, the same technique with my plein air paintings too. These are uh, lemons from my lemon tree in Palm Springs, California, where I also uh, have a residence and paint. And I took the branch off the tree and set it outside on my patio and, and painted this little still life outside. This is a still life that I, I painted in my Seattle studio. And the oranges and the blue uh, cloth are complementary colors, so it makes the painting um, pop, if you will. The colors just pop, and that's why it's such a cheerful painting. It's called Oranges and Blues. This is a painting I did in my studio of a beautiful vase of flowers that I received for my birthday. And I just thought they were so gorgeous, I just had to paint them. So I set this up in my studio um, and painted them. This is a little still life that I did in Cabo, Mexico. And those are beautiful little violet or purple flowers that I picked from the side of the road and put them in a vase of flowers and that's the ocean, Pacific Ocean in the background and uh, was very inspired to paint this little still life in Cabo San Lucas, Mexico. <laughs> What's next? Oh, more of the same painting outdoors, um, taking a trip, a cruise and going to Russia actually oh. where I, you know, well my uh, protégés have come from. The Russian Impressionist painters are my favorite. So I'm going to go see the Hermitage and um, be inspired by Russian Impressionist painters. And so next year maybe we'll have some Russian paintings like, here? Yeah, right. <laughs> well, something to look forward something to. Something to look forward to. Thank yes. you. Thank you so much. With this, Hasna Sal from all the way from Kansas? That's right, from Overland Park, Kansas. And, and Amsterdam Whitney Gallery here in New York City. Just first of all, tell us a little bit about your work and, and your philosophy. I work with glass and uh, my, uh, my training has been in architecture. Um, and then before that I did fine art. So I combined the two um, and I used glass as the medium to convey my um, my thoughts, my expressions. I have uh, pretty much two series, the uh, nature escapes, and then I have uh, the spiritualism. Um, so the, the, those are the two different trajectories I take with my work. So um, you will see a combination of both. Uh, uh, and then I have my own studios and I, I studio and with uh, many kilns and I do my work out of Kansas um, where I have a lot of space so I can create all my glass sculptures. And, uh, and then, yeah, this is my first time in uh, New York City, so very excited. Well, tell me about spiritualism. Um, spiritualism, I think that there is a lot of, uh, uh, it's underplayed a lot uh, in today's times. I think that there is so much uh, that we have to go back to our roots and um, really get into the, the, the spirit of things, into the, uh, the, what you call uh, the, the soul within. And um, I think that it's very soothing. Um, my work is meant to be very uh, contemplative and uh, it's supposed to give a sense of calmness and um, give good energy to the house. So I don't create anything that is negative. I create everything that brings positivity and energy and color and light and uh, just calm, calm uh, um, uh, forms that really uh, enrich your life because whether you're in the office or whether you're at home, I think that uh, looking at good things, looking at positive energy um, brings positive energy within you. And I think in today's times where you know there's so much um, negativity, if you will, with everything going on politically and just in every aspect, uh, I think that uh, we artists have that moral responsibility of bringing back uh, goodness and uh, and nurturing that uh, nurturing nature and uh, um, reminding people that it's important to preserve nature and so I created uh, my sculptures that are uh, forest scapes and uh, countryscapes and um, seascapes uh, etc that um, lacustrine um, just things that uh, make you appreciate the things that you forget in everyday life.
So this is my one of my most difficult pieces. Uh, this is called uh, the Koi Pond. It's the second in the series of, uh, the, well, the Koi series, if you will. And uh, it, this has multiple layers of glass, and uh, it is uh, m multiple processes that I have used in um, the sculpture. I have used casting and uh, frit work and sheet glass and uh, so there is a lot of layers of glass that I have melted together. It's gone through the kiln many times and uh, and then, then I have LED lights at the back so that during the day it gives one effect and then in the evening it has a very soothing quality because chromotherapy is another feature, uh, another dimension to my sculptures that I that I uh, like to delve in. So um, the blue color is very calming, and uh, and then koi, of course, is a very uh, uh, considered a sacred um, um, uh, thing, if you will. So the koi pond uh, for me is is a very difficult medium, and and, and also um, in this sculpture particularly, there is a fourth dimension, which is the texture. So when you look at it at a 30 degree angle, you can actually see the surface of the glass. Uh, it actually uh, uh, goes up and down, it kind of ebbs and flows. So I'm trying to create the motion of, uh, or rather the, the feel of movement in my work, because I think that, uh, you know, I, I think we should address the fourth dimension as well. So um, that is, this is, like I said, my, my most challenging piece so far, and uh, it's uh, the Koi series. This work over here is called Musings. Uh, I find that with the, with the female form, uh, a lot of body language communicates um, a woman's thoughts and uh, I think body language is so important uh, in today's times. Uh, I, I don't think words are as effective as body language. So um, this is essentially a tribute to women where I have created um, nine different uh, positions of a woman and uh, what she thinks and how she feels. Um, it is again a response to um, the environment that we are in today uh, when where uh, uh, women as such are under, you know, there's so much uh, uh, discussion. Um, so I, I uh, poets are uh, talking about it and writers are uh, talking about it. So I wanted to show what an artist's perspective, a sculptor's perspective of, uh, of, a, of a woman. I think a woman is so multidimensional and, uh, and, and, it's, and I found it very fascinating to, to project that in glass. So in this, uh, this series, I'm trying to show uh, the koi um, being a very calming influence. This is green light as opposed to the blue light from before. So I uh, just wanted to show the different effects of uh, composition and uh, create that sense of, uh, you know, what, what, what do you feel when you come into a space and, you know, how does green light impact you as opposed to the blue light? I think uh, if this is more of a countryside than the other work, which is my, my blue koi, that is more, um, that is more city-like. So I was just playing with the, the, uh, the differences between creating different compositions of uh, koi with, uh, with different light. This sculpture is, uh, is contemplation, I call it contemplation, where a woman uh, is, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to show the environment that, um, I'm trying to show today's environment, which is very, uh, um, very volatile, if you will, and, uh, and a woman uh, is so much uh, discussed and, uh, and, and I feel that uh, a lot of the time that uh, women are not given as much uh, of uh, what they are due. And so sometimes it's very frustrating uh, to see how um, uh, they are projected uh, in today's society. I mean, considering that we are in the 21st century. So it's just my frustrations that I wanted to create the sense of uh, not helplessness, but a sense of uh, not wanting to see what, how the world is projecting a woman.
this work I call spring and for me springtime is the most colorful time if you look outside the window every the, the day kind of the canvas keeps changing because of the colors and the the foliage and uh, the the uh, the insect world and you know just everything just the, the, the sunlight and so I wanted to create that sense of uh, um, spring in the air the, the the burst of color that happens um, at springtime so I call this uh, spring. So this sculpture is called Butterflies and Dragonflies, as you can see. And uh, it was springtime. I love springtime. I think after winter, when spring comes in, then uh, I think that uh, the whole canvas of the earth changes. And I love uh, showing the little details as well as the bigger, the bigger picture. So when all the butterflies and the dragonflies came out, then I had to, I had to capture that in my canvas. Uh, the colors I find more European. I wanted to create uh, this for uh, more of a European market. And uh, and then the process I used on this is each one was first cast. So it's a process called casting um, with frit work, and then then I go into the next phase, which is uh, fusing and then I use sheet glass for that so there again it goes through the kiln many times and then and then when I've r achieved the right color that I want then at that point uh, the the sculpture is considered ready may I introduce you to the Norwegian artist Asa Burkhout who is known for her rosy floral paintings who is inspired by the rosiness and the sheer joy of the floral kingdom Asa's work celebrate our terrestrial realm and her noted palette are the beautiful rosy pinks, uh, the magentas, and the pale pinks that really rejoice in the floral kingdom. And we are uh, introducing young artists and emerging artists and artists who are really being, are going to be on the constellation of stars. Thank you, Crystal. Thank you. Our great artists once again, everybody, your name? Hasna. Anna Franklin. Judith Gale. Diane Holland. Ann Gores. Ruthie Tucker. Thank you, Crystal. You're gorgeous. And once again, good night, everybody. Say good night, everyone, from Amsterdam Whitney Art Gallery. Come down and visit Chelsea, the best. Say goodbye, everyone. Bye. Thanks for watching. Come down and see the art.